If you're in the market to build a PC or even just buy a Windows-based system, you only really have two options for CPUs, either buying one from Intel or one from AMD. There's a long and extensive history as to why there are so few options. Beyond just the astronomical price of developing and bringing an x86 CPU to market, technology owned by the likes of AMD and Intel make the prospect of breaking into the desktop CPU market nearly impossible. This is disappointing as competition breeds innovation and in most cases results in the best product at the best price for the end consumer. While we are fortunate that there's no single company with a monopoly on the x86 CPU market, the current duopoly isn't that much better. Sure, when both companies are pulling out all the stops to one-up each other, the end consumer does receive a very good product at a very good price, but what happens when one of these two companies is unable to keep up with the other and stops innovating? Unfortunately, we know all too well the answer to that question. Well, the main focus of today's video is going to be a comparison between current gen CPUs, let's rewind and talk about how we got here. For many years in the early 2000s, AMD and Intel were trading blows year after year, Competition was hot and computing power continued to rise at an exponential rate, but this wouldn't last forever. A very important year I want to look at is 2011. Both AMD and Intel had major CPU architecture releases, Intel released their second gen core processors, these CPUs were based on the Sandy Bridge architecture which is now considered legendary and one of the biggest steps forward in modern computing. On the other hand, AMD also released new CPUs based on the now infamous bulldozer architecture, these FX CPUs were doomed to fail out of the gate. They ran hot, couldn't compete with Intel's higher end SKUs, and their high core counts were later found out to be misleading to say the least, which actually led to a class action lawsuit that AMD lost. After years went on, AMD continued to produce new FX CPUs and Intel continually released new Core i CPUs. After about 5 years of this, Intel had taken much of AMD's market share and the general population favored Intel over AMD, and rightfully so. In most instances, going with an Intel CPU made much more sense. Also, as AMD continued to struggle and stay above water, Intel lost a lot of its incentive to continue to innovate. This period during the middle of the 2010s, we saw the slowest progress of desktop CPU performance ever, but that all changed on March 2nd of 2017. This was the day the first Ryzen CPU released. The Ryzen 7 1700 was the first mainstream true 8-core CPU on a consumer level platform. Not only was it a high core count consumer focused chip, but its IPC was vastly improved compared to the FX CPUs it replaced. The 1700 rivaled Intel's enthusiast centered 6900K for a third of the price. Not only was it a powerful 8-core CPU for $330, but it could run on sub $100 motherboards and was cool enough to run unthrottled on the free stock cooler that came in the box. At this point, Intel still held the performance crown, but as the years progressed, AMD continued to innovate while Intel struggled staying stuck on the aging 14 nanometer process. By the time 2021 came around, Intel was in a similar position to how AMD was in 2016. They were struggling to compete, and AMD looked like the obvious choice in most instances. But luckily, Intel finally struck back, and in Q4 of 2021, they released their new 12th gen CPUs on the 7 nanometer process. For the first time in nearly 5 years, Intel made a major jump in performance and technology. These 12th gen CPUs offer vastly improved performance, the addition of efficiency cores on the high end, and great value for their MSRP, which brings us today where I'll be comparing offerings from both AMD and Intel. While the flagship i9s and Ryzen 9s are where people like to focus when looking at who is the best, I prefer looking more at the mid-range, specifically the i5s and Ryzen 5s, as that's what the majority of people are going to go with. The three CPUs we're going to look at are the new Intel Core i5-12400, the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X, and the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. All three of these can be had for around $200, with the i5 coming in a bit cheaper than the others. All three of these offer 6 cores and 12 threads, all three have a decent included stock core, and other than the 5600X, all have integrated graphics, which is an area I will be focusing on a bit. These are the three best mid-level offerings from both, and the performance of these chips will tell us a lot about who is the best current pick. The reason I'm just testing the 12400 and not also the 12400F is because other than the integrated graphics, these are exactly the same and should perform the same. This is unlike the 5600G and 5600X, which do have inherent differences other than the addition or lack of integrated graphics. There are a few areas where I will be focusing for these chips, which include raw CPU slash workstation performance, 
gaming performance and integrated graphics performance. To keep things as fair as possible, I did my best to remove any major variables that could affect performance. Both the Intel and AMD systems will be using the same RAM, SSD, power supply, and case. Both are using an Asus Prime Plus motherboard and both are being cooled by their respective stock coolers. For gaming benchmarks, I'm using the same RTX 3080. I'm also going to be keeping these CPUs at stock speeds, both CPU and integrated GPU wise. I will admit AMD does have the edge in terms of overclocking as all Ryzen chips are unlocked, but the majority of people run their systems at stock speeds and how high of an overclock you can get varies greatly from CPU to CPU, even of the exact same model. One thing I will note is the CPU performance of my 5600G is benchmarking a bit lower than others I've seen on YouTube, so just keep that in mind and I would recommend looking at other videos in addition to this one when selecting a CPU to go with. So the first area to look at is raw CPU performance. These tests will give us a good idea of how Intel and AMD stack up compared to one another from a raw power standpoint. The ways I went about testing this was through the use of Cinebench, Blender, and 7-Zip. Starting things off with 7-Zip, this is an area where AMD takes an obvious lead. The 5600G slightly outperforms the 12400 and the 5600X outperforms it by a large margin. 7-Zip is a good representation of raw CPU power, but it doesn't tell the whole story. Next up is Cinebench, which is probably the most popular CPU benchmark of all time. In this test, Intel beats out both the 5600G and 5600X in multi and single core performance. This is interesting to see as if we were looking at a 10th or 11th gen i5, the results would be much different. For the final CPU slash workstation benchmark, I looked at Blender. I ran all three of the built-in benchmarks and again, we find the 12400 beating out the 5600X and 5600G in all three of these tests. These results are pretty indicative of what you're going to see when comparing these three in any CPU benchmark, that being the 12400 winning in most cases, but AMD is still having the edge in some instances. With the raw CPU benchmarks done, let's move on to gaming. I tested all these games at 1080p low settings to ensure the CPU was the limiting factor. One thing to keep in mind is doing this does exaggerate performance differences and pairing these CPUs with more realistic GPUs or even just running this 3080 at 4K would produce much closer results. With that being said, testing at 1080p low may not be super realistic, but it's the best way of isolating the CPU as the main variable. Starting things off with Borderlands 3, the 12400 and 5600G produce very similar averages, with the 12400 having better 1% lows, but once we look at the 5600X, we find it handily beats both of these chips in both average and 1% lows, so in Borderlands 3, AMD definitely takes the cake. Next up is Far Cry 6, which again was tested at 1080p low using the built-in benchmark benchmark, doing this resulted in the Core i5 producing considerably higher averages and 1% lows than both of the AMD offerings. The 5600X was somewhat close but the 5600G was way behind and overall Intel gets the win in this game. Next up is Rainbow Six Siege. This game using the built-in benchmark put the 12400 between the 5600X and 5600G. The 12400 wasn't too far behind the 5600X, but well outpaced the 5600G in my test. So while it did beat out the AMD chip, it still fell short of the 5600X, with that being said, the 1% lows were higher on the 12400, so in this game it was kind of a toss up. Moving on to Horizon Zero Dawn, this is another game where the 12400 slightly beats out the 5600X in average FPS, handily beats it in 1% lows, and completely decimates the 5600G. Again, performance between the 12400 and 5600X isn't that far off, and playing at higher settings would narrow the difference even more. Hitman 3 is another clear win for the Intel CPU with it beating out the 5600X and 5600G by noticeable margins in average and 1% lows. Finally, I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider which followed a similar trend to the other games where the 12400 edged out a win on the 5600X and handily beat out the 5600G. All in all, the 12400 definitely takes the dub here. The 5600X isn't far behind and is still a good option, but based on these tests, it would be hard for me to recommend the 5600G if you are going to a dedicated GPU right out of the gate. But what if you aren't going with a dedicated graphics card out of the gate and are going to be using the integrated graphics until you can save up for a graphics card? Well, then the 5600X isn't an option at all and we can only compare the performance of the 5600G and 12400. The 5600G is using AMD's Vega 7 graphics, while the 12400 is using Intel's UHD 730. To be fair, the AMD integrated graphics are much more heavily marketed as being good for gaming, but I still want to see how the 12400 stacked up in iGPU performance. 
I reran four of the gaming benchmarks using the integrated GPU on both of these chips, so again, all these were run at 1080p low settings. Starting off with Rainbow Six, the 5600G put out an impressive 101 FPS average with 1% lows of 85. This was over twice the performance of the 12400, which offered a 38 FPS average with 1% lows of 31. Moving on to Borderlands 3, we see a similar story. The 5600G offers an average of 34 FPS, and the Core i5 offers an unplayable average of 4. Next up is Far Cry 6. In this game, neither of these iGPUs can produce an average above 30, but the 5600G still takes the clear performance crown. Finally, in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the results follow the exact same trend and give the 5600G the clear victory. Overall, these results were to be expected. This just illustrates that even though the raw CPU performance of the 5600G is considerably lower than the 12400, the overall integrated gaming performance is much higher. So now that we've run all these tests, what conclusions can we draw? The first big one is that if you're building a system with a dedicated graphics card out of the gate, don't even begin to consider the 5600G. My recommendation at this point is the 12400 as it edges out the 5600X in more tests than it does not. With that being said, you can still make a case for the 5600X and performance for the price is still very respectable. Also for APU gaming builds, AMD is still the king, especially in the mid range. Because of all these tests and tests from others, I think it may be time for me to switch my system back to Intel for the first time since 2017. AMD still has plenty of great offerings, but for gaming, Intel seems to currently hold the crown in most cases. Beyond this, chips like the i3-12100 are making an embarrassment of AMD at the low end, who doesn't currently offer any competitors near its price. With that being said, AMD's new 3D CPU models are seeming to beat out Intel's high-end SKUs in gaming, and if you want to see that, I'll link a hardware unbox video on the topic in the description below. The final note is these results, whether you're an Intel or AMD fanboy, should make you happy. Intel and AMD trading blows means they both need to continue to innovate if they want to stay competitive, and it means we have a very exciting next few years of releases. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up. This comparison was a decent amount of work, so if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Also, let me know your thoughts on this full comparison and AMD versus Intel in the comments below. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.